coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next SDL 2.0 tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be learning about color keying and color modulation. Uh, before I get started, uh, like I, the, okay, a general rule if I forget to do this, uh, if you have something that says uh, init, like image init, TTF init, or SDL init, usually it has a quit. So um, if I forget to put that in one of my tutorials, uh, you, I'll, I'm not, if by the, it, it should, I should have an annotation in the previous video if I remember. Uh, but if I, if there was no annotation, you're at this tutorial and you forgot to uh, put it in or you, or you um, just missed the annotation or something, uh, then just remember to put that. And remember that anything that uh, uses a pointer or something, it needs to be, it needs to be closed and so, or it needs to be destroyed. So remember just to close the font uh, after you're done with it. So anyways, on to the point of this tutorial. Uh, so color keying. So what is color keying? Uh, uh, back when I was using Allegro 4, uh, you could only load in bitmaps. I, I believe they may have had extensions to load in different file formats, but I mainly worked to bitmaps. And the benefit of working with PNGs and stuff is like you can have transparent areas around it so you don't have a background. Um, but with working with bitmap images, they don't have an alpha key. And so you have to use sort of like an alpha mask or something to mask a certain color. So what uh, I used to do and what a lot of people used to do was set the parts that they wanted to be transparent, they set that color to magenta. And so they use some code in Allegro to make it so that anytime it sees magenta, it uses that as a transparent color. And that's how you worked around it in Allegro. So now in SDL, yeah, with the extension library, we can uh, we can load in PNGs and all that stuff. But let's just say we have a background and we just want to remove a certain color from it. Uh, we use something called color keying. So what we load uh, in our load texture function, uh, what we're gonna do is before we set this texture, we're gonna say SDL underscore set color key. And so asks for surface, so we'll put surface in there. The flag just wants to know if we want to use a color key or not. So we're going to use there's between SDL underscore true and SDL underscore false. So we're going to use SDL underscore true. Then we're going to say SDL underscore map RGB. And you can put RGBA if you want to have the, um, the alpha. But in this case, we don't need it. So we're just going to say uh, surface and we're going to get the format. And then in this case, we want to remove the uh, color red. And so we want to remove it uh, red with this in, uh, inten intensity. And so uh, in the image that I'm going to load, I think I called it rect, it's going to be this image right here. Uh, so there's a red, uh, a green, and a blue. So we're going to, uh, sorry, that was test code. Um, so what we're going to do is run the code without this. And that's embarrassing. Uh, let's go to the bottom. You know what? Let's get rid of the text. And then let's get rid of the player rect and position here. So we just want to draw it in the, uh, the full screen. So as you can see, this is what we got. And as soon as we say OK, uh, we actually say to set the color key to red and we run one more time. As you can see, we don't see the red anymore. Um, and then it look, the background, the default background is black, so now it's transparent, so we don't see the red. Obviously, you can see some of the red outline there, but it pretty much removed uh, the red from the from the picture. Um, so the that's basically what it does. It just sets sets a mask for the particular color that you specify, so that it doesn't show it anymore and it makes it transparent. So the uh, uh, sorry, the next one is SDL set. Uh, what was it again? Set texture color mod. Sorry. 
So I guess there's a surface and there's a texture one. Uh, so we'll just do the one for the texture. And what, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, just going to show you what it does. So I'm just going to say 128, um, 255, 255. And if we run this program, all of a sudden we get this. So what the hell went on? So, so we noticed that the red got a, a, a bit dull. But the blue, the, gr uh, the green stayed the same and the background changed color. Well, what this does is that it modifies... Uh, it modifies the RGB properties of a particular color, right? So, for example, our green, our the intensity of our green was 255. Of, of our green was 255, and since we specified 255 there, right? All it has is green, so it hasn't modified it. Same with the blue. Uh, we set the 255. It hasn't been modded. For the red, though, right here, it had some red pixels in there, which it was all red. And so it said, okay, for all the red pixels in this image, uh, lower the intensity to 128, which is about half the intensity of the of, uh, of a regular red. And so we got this dull color. Now, the white background has properties of all three. And so when we modified all three of these values, we got this, uh, we got this color background right here. So the color mod can uh, modify the basically the properties of the colors in your particular image so if you want to play around with that uh, you can have a bit of fun with that but that's the only thing I want to show you there's just those two uh, functions so have fun with that I hope you enjoyed this tutorial don't forget to comment rate and subscribe uh, don't forget to like my page on Facebook follow on Twitter don't forget to sign up on my website as well uh, for uh, for updates for forum polls for source code and so on and so forth so thanks for watching and bye for now.